the TNA story, I don't say was a lot simpler, but WCW went away. There was a void in the marketplace. We've heard kind of all the, the, the foundations on why I, I thought there was going to be an opportunity. But essentially, the number one is that without a number two, there's no such thing as a number one. And when Vince bought his competition, it was just essentially the WWE and others. Uh, and when I say others, small independent promotions around the globe. Yes, Japan had a scene, and I know there's uh, other folks out there that, yeah, Mexico was going, but it was just a 2001, 2002, completely different generation. Here we are 20 years later. But in this scenario, here we are, uh, you know, 10 years later. And so, Conrad, uh, I, I think the best way, why did I think, of course, I'm going to try to use all my life lessons um, and then some. But, um, you know, in, in 2009, when me and, you know, I'll, I'll call it, and I refer to it on the, you know, the, the Dixie power play and I was removed from creative, um, and, you know, sent home and, and all that nonsense. But in 2010, I came back and me and Bob came to an agreement, Bob Carter that, okay, Jeff, you focus on international and live events, go create revenue. And I dove in head first and I was really, really excited. And, uh, with Don West and others on the live events, Andy Barton, uh, namely, we had success internationally, uh, lots of success, even tours and everything that went with that. But that went through 2010, 2011, 2012. By the time we had gotten essentially to the end of 2012, beginning of 2013, the writing was on the wall. The conversations we were, were being had, not just in Nashville, but in Dallas, uh, Dean Broadhead referred to it as the financial death spiral is in process. Um, no need to go into to detail here, but I, I saw the writing on the wall and I, uh, you know, made a very conscious decision. Uh, Karen had mixed emotions about it. A lot of folks did, but I, knew the trajectory. I kind of knew we were headed. I knew the internal landscape in that Conrad, in a lot of ways, I thought to myself, self, no, I thought, am I going to just sort of stay the course and flounder and let this ship sink? Um, or am I going to go gamble on myself again? Not saying that it didn't have options because there's a lot of things. What ifs? I could have done this. I could have done that. But I knew in 2013, the way we were headed, and I say we collectively TNA, that um, it was ugly and getting uglier. Um, I know the Hogan Dixie situation uh, wasn't pretty. Uh, the financial situation wasn't pretty. Obviously, BHE, Bischoff Hervey situation. Uh, the spike relationship was beyond strained. Um, there was some international chattering going on that, the, you know, the, the brand wasn't what it once was. Now we're two years in, three years in, and some international markets didn't want to, they didn't want to go with the branding. They bought TNA impact, TNA explosion, TNA pay-per-views. And that rebranding process that went from TNA to impact that didn't completely go over. And there was a lot of a mix of emotions there. So in so many different ways, it was a mess. 